Wall Street superstar. I was this, my family were this, for that. and it was all untrue. So I don't categorize these as mistakes. I think that part of your process, of, the cathartic process of redemption, if you like, it's got to start from, I've been a terrible liar. I mean, would you be prepared to say that? Sure. Like well, I said, on, well, I've been a terrible liar on, the, okay. on those subjects. And, and what, what I try to convey to the American people is I made mistakes of allowing the pressures of what I thought needed to be done in order to this. This wasn't about tricking anybody. This wasn't about this. It's it's yes, it was. no, 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 no. Let, let me the finish. The whole thing was about tricking people. Let, let me finish. It wasn't about tricking the people. This was about getting accepted by the party. You never got a master's in business at New York. No, no, like I said, no. Right. I mean, again, <laughs> did you not think people would find this out? You know, Pierce. Not after I you're had... Not, you're not running to be like a reality TV no, star. No, no, I understand. Right? You know, if you, if you were going on Celebrity Apprentice, which I went on, right, it doesn't matter. You can embellish stuff about yourself. Nobody cares, right? But to run for Congress of the United States and to just tell blatant lies about even your academic record, I'm just struck, not necessarily that a politician would lie, but that you would think no one would find out. Well... I'll, I'll humor you this. I ran in 2020 for the same exact seat um, for Congress, and I got away with it then, and I guess... Right. Well, that's honest. Stupid. So you thought, actually, they don't, they're not going to find out? No, I didn't think so. The second claim was that on the, on the campaign website that you graduated with a degree in economics and finance from Baruch College in 2000. I'll, say, I'll save you the... I did not attain a college education. That was... That was that, regrettably so, is one of my biggest uh, uh, regrets in life. So that, that was a lie? To, absolutely. And I admitted to it, and I've, I've made peace with the fact that I made a bad choice in making that decision. It wasn't easy. What, what's the simple explanation for why you made... Why would you lie about something like that? Expectation on society, the pressure, couldn't afford it, uh, decided I wanted to run for office, although I had built a very credible business career, and I just didn't have that part of my... Biography that I could not give anything. Did you not think that you'd be cool? You know, I just went with it. I, I didn't think... I mean, if you're going to make up a lie, are you thinking at all? I just think it was a stupid decision in my part. Very stupid decision that I regret every day. I'm one of the most staunch pro-Israel, most staunch pro-Judaism people in Congress today. Well, so much so, you claim to be Jewish, but you're not Jewish. I, I never claim to be Jewish. I've always made, I've always made a party favor joke, you which You claim was, to be Jewish, half Jewish, a proud American Jew, a Latino Jew, and a non-observant Jew. They're all direct quotes from you. So... But you're not. You're Pierce, a Catholic. Not I've, me. I've... I'm a Catholic. Pierce, I've always made this as a party favor joke, and it's, I've done it on stages across What's the country. What's funny about falsely no, claiming you're Jewish? No, 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 not falsely claiming I'm Jewish. I'd always say, I'm, I was raised Catholic, but I come from a Jewish family, so that makes me Jew-ish. But again... It's Congress... always been a party favor. Everybody's always laughed, I'm and sure now that do. everybody's I'm, canceling I'm sure have... me, sure everybody's they're... pounding down for a pound well, of flesh. You, because you're not Jewish. Well, I, I never said I was. I've you always, did. I, you I've, I've, said you were. And I would always say, but my grandparents are Jewish on my mother's side, so I'm Jew-ish. But what do you say to people watching this? You go, all right, that's of course you do, that's fine. But what about all the lies you've told? Do you, I mean, would you stare down the camera and just apologize? I've, I've looked inside the camera and I've said sorry. And I have no problem saying sorry and asking for forgiveness of the American people watching at home and everyone abroad. Because I think that if you can, if you can ask for forgiveness and have the humility to accept and admit your errors, I think that's the first step. Now, it's amazing how I don't get that same courtesy like everyone else does. Every, and you've been through this, Pierce. It, it seems like there's a different... There's people who are granted that opportunity to apologize and redeem themselves, and there's people who are thrown into the fire pit, and, and the media and everyone else around them are hell-bound on making sure that that person's life is hell. I'm in the latter part. I don't get the opportunity to ask for forgiveness and, and gain forgiveness from people or sympathy. This is George Santos speaking with Piers Morgan on his show Uncensored, finally coming out and owning up to most of the lies that he's told. Of course, he's still clinging on to a few, but then again, old habits die hard. Now, the reason he gives for lying is, quote, expectation on society, the pressure, couldn't afford it. But here's the thing, 
It's not 1975. You don't need to be a white guy who graduated from Yale to serve in Congress. AOC, one of the most well-known Democrats in the House, was a bartender before getting elected. The two newly elected Democratic senators from Georgia were a filmmaker and a preacher. The Republican nominee for Senate in Georgia was a college football star. For governor in Arizona was a news anchor. For senator in Pennsylvania was a doctor from New Jersey. All of which is to say that Santos trying to pretend that the only way he could gain acceptance is to lie is undermined by members of the very body that he's serving in right now. Their very existence is proof that he is wrong. He goes on to say that this wasn't about tricking the people, it was about being accepted by the party. And give me a break, even when he was already the nominee, the guy spewed lies like a fire hydrant. But I will grant him one thing, it is not off base to claim that a good way to gain acceptance among the powers that be within the Republican Party is to lie. At this point, it almost seems like a prerequisite. Donald Trump told more lies than every president in history combined. Herschel Walker wouldn't admit to how many kids he had. Dr. Oz couldn't admit to how many houses he had. And of course, a slew of MAGA candidates wouldn't, and still won't, admit that Joe Biden won the 2020 election. At this point, the only steadfast principle in the Republican Party is that you do have to lie. So when George Santos said that he did it for acceptance among the party elite, he may not have meant it this way, but he may have accidentally gotten that part right. He then defends himself over the whole Jew-ish lie. Couple things here. First, this is a dumb joke. The fact that he uses this as his go-to at parties should give you a pretty good idea of how entertaining George Santos is at those events. Second, it's not a play on words when the word play and the actual word are literally the same word. Jewish and Jewish are the same. So the people listening to you do not know whether you're doing a bit because nothing distinguishes this bit from reality. And if people did know that it was a bit, then the whole world wouldn't have thought that the guy was actually Jewish. That's how you know your joke isn't landing when quite literally no one knows that it was a joke. And third, we know why he did it. He thought he could raise more money from the wealthy Jews that he was pandering to by saying that he was Jewish. It's no secret. And so while he couches all of this in some pro-Israel speak, the fact is that when you use Jewish people for financial gain, you're not actually a friend to Jews, you are exploiting them. And yes, it's still exploitation, even if you think it's one big hilarious comedy show. And finally, I just want to address the very last point that George Santos made about people making mistakes and while they get to seek forgiveness, he doesn't. And there is some truth to that too. Too, but here's the difference. George Santos is currently, as in right now, experiencing the fruits of his lies. As a member of Congress, having gotten there through his lies, this is the direct result of that deception. There is no grace for George Santos because him being there in Congress today is a consequence of that fraudulent behavior. Now, if he resigned and then owned up to his duplicity, then sure, the process of healing would begin. But lying to get somewhere and then getting there doesn't mean that he's undergone some big character arc and that he's a changed man. It just literally means that the lying worked. He won't get forgiveness because he didn't earn it. He is still dining off the deception. And the fact that he doesn't realize that is a perfect, perfect testament to just how devoid of integrity that guy really is. So look, I know there are people out there who think that George Santos should resign. Now, I'm thinking about this from a different way. First of all, he won't resign and power hungry Kevin McCarthy won't call for an expulsion vote anyway, so all of this is moot. But second, he is a lot more damaging to Republicans just by virtue of being in Congress than not. The guy is a walking, talking monument to the shameless duplicity that has pervaded the Republican Party. Santos makes it easy for the rest of us to say, the GOP is an unserious party full of unqualified people who have lied to your faces and have done nothing to make your lives better. And maybe you can look at someone like George Santos and say, well, he's just one random guy in Congress. He doesn't represent the entire party. But what about Marjorie Taylor Greene? What about Lauren Boebert? What about Paul Gosar and Matt Gates and Jim Jordan and Andy Biggs? What about Ted Cruz and Rand Paul and Josh Hawley? What about Donald Trump as the former president of the United States and current leader of the Republican Party? At some point, it becomes clear that these extremists, these looney tunes, these liars and cheats and grifters are not the exception in that party, they are the rule. And George Santos' presence in that party makes all of that abundantly clear. Before you go, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. You can click the thumbnail right here on this screen. And if you want to support my work even further, the best way is to subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. There you can check out my interviews with major players in the world of politics, including President Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, Elizabeth Warren, Katie Porter, Jamie Raskin, and so many more. Plus other interviews that live exclusively on the podcast. That link is also right here on this screen, or just search No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen wherever you listen to podcasts.